Hello Aries, welcome to Dove and Serpent Tarot. My name is Paul. If Aries is your sun, moon, or rising sign, this is your tarot card reading. Remember to hit the like button, leave a comment, consider subscribing to the channel, especially if this reading resonates with you. If there is anything you would like me to pray over, or meditate upon, or send positive energy toward, please let me know. Now this is going to be a general reading, so try to be open and receptive to whatever may come through during our time together. I am merely the messenger, and I ask you to connect directly with each of these cards and use your own intuition to take you beyond the details that I might provide. And remember, Aries, that the most important part of any tarot reading is you. And we start out with the lover's card. Um, very interesting. Doesn't always mean romance. Okay, put your pitchforks away. Uh, but it could. Okay. This is a card about choice. This is a card about um, the commitment, the dedication, the devotion to something. And what I feel like this is, is your ability to be inspired. Right? And this is all of the great things that come from you, Aries, when you are inspired. Um, so I wonder if right now you're feeling inspired or if there is something coming your way that will inspire you. And it really, it could be love, right? It could be that new relationship, that new job. It could be just this, uh, I, anything. It could be all sorts of things, right? And that's why this card is called the lovers. It's kind of like we are falling in love with something. We are being hit with Cupid's arrow and we feel inspired. It's kind of like it's that feeling when you're in love that you can just conquer the world, right? Um, so what are you in love with, right? What is the, where is the inspiration coming from? Where is it leading you toward? I think you're somebody that has a uh, strong commitment to your family and your friends. I feel like you're a good friend. I feel like when somebody in your life needs you, you're there. And I feel like you're the first one to, to be there when somebody is having an issue. It's almost like you don't wait for them to ask. You're just there. You're there. You show up for people. You know, and we need a lot of people like that in the world, especially today. Yeah. I feel like you're somebody with a strong sense of family and community. And I think it even feels like you're one of those people that you, you love your family, you love your community, you love your friends, but you don't overdo it. You like to be kind of on your own, doing your own thing. You're, there, you're very self-led, very self-directed. But... Um, you, you like to have that support system. You like to have that sense of family and connection there with you, you know, uh, with you in spirit, I guess I should say. Um, so let's see what we're doing with some of this energy right now. What is the big, you know, challenge for you at this time? Well, we've got the emperor energy. There's your power card, super power card. We've got to ring the bell because spirit is in the building. Um, with the emperor energy, as the as your kind of quest right now um i think that this is a matter of you really being inspired by something and um trying to contain and control that energy and direct it towards something that is going to be very productive okay so you're inspired by something of a spiritual or religious nature something of romance and love or uh, of an art you know um whatever you're inspired by is leading to this increase of creative energy, an increase of this enthusiasm and this passion for life and uh, this heightened energy. Okay. And I feel like the emperor has to figure out how to distribute that, right? Because without some sort of organization or order, all that creative energy is going to be chaos. And I don't think the emperor likes chaos. Um, it may appear that way from the outside, because people don't always understand your choices, right? But you aren't somebody that, that thrives on chaos. You're not this kind of adrenaline junkie that everybody thinks you are. Um, you, like to, you like to do things, you're very active, um, but they have to be intentional and, and kind of uh, purposeful, okay? Two major arcana energies, this is, whatever this inspiration is, is bringing out the very best qualities of you, okay? And I think if there is a challenge or, or an obstacle or the, the quest that you're on now, is just how are we going to manifest all of this creative energy right now? What is it that you really wanna do? 
right? How are you going to utilize this wonderful creative opportunity um, with this heightened, heightened spiritual energy, creative energy, this passion and this love that you feel, right? How are we directing this force? Um, I feel like there's also something here of, of taking, a, um, taking a leadership role in terms of your family or even in a relationship, um, uh, being the one to, to direct the course of something. Okay, so if this is a family thing, if this is a group of friends, or if this is you in, an, in, in the relationship, a romantic relationship, I feel like the emperor is here that says you, you've got to step up now and direct the energy. Right? If this is just internal energy, that kind of inspiration, you've got to direct it. But I feel like you're kind of, um, the, if there's a group of people, you're the one that's saying, this way, gang, and you're heading off and everybody's kind of following you. That You've got to take the initiative to, to lead right now. Okay, um, Let's keep going. What's underneath the surface? The Eight of Pentacles. There's also something, a, a good hallmark of a, of a uh, a productive or successful emperor, of course, patience, right? Of course, it's patience. And there's a lot of, um, and this isn't, I think, a very, very popular uh, assumption about Aries, but you're okay with, with repetition. You're okay with um, kind of the, the daily grind of life, you know? Um, I think you bring a lot of energy to those, to the, especially when you're inspired, you know, because the Eight of Pentacles is, is sort of a routine, right? We think of somebody, at least in the, let's say, the Rider-Waite-Smith deck, it's somebody who's, who's uh, creating these individual pentacles one at a time, and then the next one, exactly the same, and then the next one, exactly the same. So it's this, it's this slow and steady um, repetition of things that is going to bring you the most amount of success right now. So patience and, and a slow approach, a cautious approach, but really it's saying that um, these huge, great, unbelievably great goals that you have are not accomplished all in one bang, right? It's the steady force day after day after day that leads to the best results for you. It's not expecting um, huge leaps and bounds of progress, you know, in an instant. It really is just kind of showing up every day, giving it everything you've got, you know, putting your, putting your heart and soul into it. And that kind of, of repetition, we think of somebody who's trying to master a skill or master an, an instrument or something. It is just the repetition, doing, practicing your chords and your scales day in and day out until it's just boring, right? But that is what is leading you to those absolutely peak moments of experience. And I think you're somebody that knows that. I think that you have that kind of very intentional, very thoughtful and patient approach to whatever you're doing, right? Wherever you're directing this force, wherever the, the emperor is taking us, okay? Um, this is a very, very good quality to have. Let's keep going now. What's in the background position? The Princess of Cups. Princess of Cups in this position, there are unrealized dreams, unrealized goals. Okay, so this inspiration, whatever this lover's energy is, I feel like what it is essentially doing is um, it's allowing you to revisit a lot of these unrealized or unfulfilled dreams, goals, wishes, hopes, and aspira aspirations. Um, revisiting those and perhaps doing something with them. Okay? It could be a long lost childhood dream, right? This could be something that you've always wanted to do, but just never, never felt that you could or that there was time or that you know, there was space for you to do that. I feel like now there's this energy about you that feels like we can do everything. Now I, you can. Now the whole world is yours, right? Now it feels like all of these dreams are very, very possible. Okay, I don't know what's changed with you except that inspiration. Maybe it's a new love. Maybe it's just a, a spiritual experience. Maybe it's a new job. Maybe it's um, 
I don't know, maybe it was a rite of passage, right? Um, I feel like there was some significant event recently for you that is, or feels very recent. So it might even be something that's happening now or is happening in a couple of days, but there's something major that is bringing some of this inspiration to you, okay? And I think it's allowing you to revisit a lot of these. These are almost regrets. These are hopes, desires, dreams, goals, wishes, and aspirations that have gone unfulfilled. And I think that because this card is here and it's still, it's still in the background position, it's still affecting you, right? Um, I think that's because you, you're, you hadn't gotten over these, right? These are things that still, I gotta move this card over. Um, <clears throat> these are things that are still affecting you. It's almost that there are still these kinds of regrets that we're still, we still hold these dreams, goals, wishes, hopes, and aspirations. Um, we still have them inside. And so it feels like they are unfulfilled. It feels like that kind of bothers you. So this might be the opportunity for you to revisit these. What is that, what is that greatest fantasy life you know, that you've always dreamed about? Maybe it's one particular thing. Maybe this is the one dream that got away. Okay. Um, in, in another way, I, we could look at this as this is that one biggest goal or that biggest dream that you've ever had. And maybe the lover's card is saying that you're, you're being inspired to go after this again. And really, it's the commitment to this dream that's bringing that, that inspiration. All right? Aspiration, inspiration. Um, it really, it could be that... Uh, you know, you've been focusing on this a little bit more. You kind of have redirected your attention to this. And that is bringing about so much of this um, increase of, of energy. And maybe the Eight of Pentacles is, you know, you have been or will be working very diligently and carefully and meticulously to manifest that dream. Okay, let's look at another card. What's up above everything? Three of Pentacles. Yeah, I feel like this is something that you, that's already underway. I don't feel like it's completed yet. I feel like the, the princess of, of cups is the potential for us to manifest the dream or the fantasy or that, you know, that aspiration. And then the three of pentacles is you doing the physical work necessary, understanding what it's going to take to do it. Okay, there is a physical strength that is needed here. There's really, it's kind of like the emperor has this, has this, this dream to build the, the greatest monument or the greatest, you know, pyramid that the world has ever seen, right? Um, as of yet, it's still, it's still a dream. It's still a fantasy. It's still in the imagination. We know what's possible. Now we're actually gathering the materials and the resources. We know what it's going to take. We know how much time and energy and how many people we need helping us. We know how much it's going to cost. Like we've got all this stuff and things are starting to, starting to happen. And maybe the work has, the work has begun. Okay, this could be a career thing, could be an art thing. It could be this kind of, this um, your life's work, your magnum opus, right? Your great work. Let's see what's in the future position. Ah, seven of pentacles. This is not something that has a strictly financial component to it. Okay, and I think the Seven of Pentacles here is um, is really it's it's part of the it, uh, obviously Seven and Eight right of Pentacles. It's you understanding and being ready for this. Um, the really the intense work that this is going to require. So these two cards. Um, on the one hand, we we want the fruits of our labor. We know that if we put in this consistent effort, eventually this thing's going to bear fruit and it's going to be fruit that I can enjoy, right? Um, but in a very practical way, in this very horizontal way, uh, very earthly, very, you know, um, linear kind of thing, we know that there's going to be a lot of days where there's no fruit, you know? Uh, but that's not turning you away, right? We know that. We know that this is something long-term now. We know that this is something that through the daily efforts, the dedication, the devotion, that um, it will bear fruit, but not immediately, okay? 
Um, you don't plant your seeds and then the next day you go and well here you have this you know beautiful peach tree or something. Um, it takes time to grow this thing. Yeah, and I think you're ready for that. I think this is something long term for you. I think um, I think there are hidden benefits as well. I think that's why we. I think that this card is really a mystery card to me, because it is called failure. To me, it feels more of like um, uh, you know, not yet succeeding, right? Not yet success kind of thing. Um, but there's also it's a card that maybe to our human eyes it just seems like there's nothing there. I planted my seeds, I watered it, and next day I go out, it's still just dirt. Nothing's happened, right? But if we were able to look very, very close, we see that things are happening. So this is a recognition of the progress that we've made um, in between those really big peak moments of success, right? This is us seeing the daily, the daily toil, the little, the, it's, a, it's a drop at a time in the bucket. One drop at a time, one step at a time. Um, we're able to see that progress if we really look closely and look with our discernment, with our spiritual eyes. Um, we can see that this is not just a black card of dirt, right? That there, there has been progress. There are things happening. There are rewards here, but they're more subtle. In between those really big, obvious peak ex, you know, experiences, there are the subtle rewards the subtle satisfactions, the subtle nourishment that we can take in with what we're doing, right? With what you're working on. Um, so if we use the, the analogy of the learning to play guitar, I don't know how to play guitar. I feel like it's something like this. Um, we, um, we're practicing day to day, doing the chords and the scales and all this stuff. And it's just, it feels like it feels repetitive and repetitive and repetitive. What we really want is the fruit from, from all this labor. We want to be on stage jamming with our, our band or, or whatever, right? Performing, you know? Um, being able to play a song, maybe, right? <clears throat> um, I learned half of a song one time on an acoustic guitar. It was an Alice in Chains song. Um, but anyway, um, those are the fruits of the labor. We want that big peak experience, but also that daily practice. There's a certain satisfaction when it's like, hey, I got that one. I figured out that chord. And I, I might not be able to make a song out of it just yet, but I can do that one and it sounds good. And I can enjoy that and I can continue being motivated by that. You know, we have to find the subtle. We have to find those, those little bits of nourishment and encouragement in these longer um, quests that we're on, right? And really with the emperor too, the emperor is uh, an energy that thinks long-term. The emperor thinks about what's good for the, for the realm generations to come, not just about how can I make the most of my emperorship today, you know? Um, it, it, it's meant to, in its best qualities anyway, think about the long-term, think, think about what's better for you know, the long distance life, the, the, um, those long term goals, right? Now, if this emperor was maybe uh, surrounded by some more difficult energies, perhaps, then we'd get a little bit more of the shadow side. Just an emperor that's greedy, just wants power and money and all this stuff right now, doesn't care about what it's going to leave behind later. Okay, but you've got the good qualities here. This is your superpower card. After all, let's select the mystery card, bonus card, confirmation card. This is a random card from the Smith Weight Tarot. This is the factor infinite and unknown. It's going to go right here. And you know what? I got to move that card again. I don't know where to put these. We're going to put Kelly Kapoor right there on top. If you have an idea about that card, go ahead and put it in the comments down below. Um, and if you haven't subscribed yet, please do. It's totally free doesn't cost anything. It helps out the channel, and I really do appreciate that. Okay, general energy now, Path of the Serpent. We've got an eight, an eight of wands. Um, swiftness, right? This is um, kind of a counterbalance with the eight of pentacles, right? Fire and earth. We've got all this, all this energy that wants things right now, quickly. It's just, I feel like I'm bursting with this energy to make progress. It has to be channeled. It has to be, um, 
you know, it has to be kind of mitigated and, uh, and directed into the right uh, areas of life. And that's really part of the emperor. Now, the emperor is the, the epitome of fire and earth, right? Because it's an Aries energy, it's fire. It's also the fourth mystery of the tarot. So that suggests the earth, right? Fire and earth, your ability to manifest whatever you put your mind to, whatever you put your, your soul to, right? So then when we get the fire and earth down here, we realize that we've got all of these great ideas, all of, these, all of this creative energy, and if we didn't do anything with it, this would become anxiety. This would become, um, this, this would become like we're, we're tap dancing on the shag carpet. We've got the jazz hands. We want to do something, but there's no outlet for it. Right? And eventually this is going to wear us down. Okay? This is, this, we're going to just, uh, you know, it's just a, a heightened level of anxiety. And we said there at the beginning, there's this heightened level of creative energy. What if that creative energy doesn't go anywhere? And it just stays inside and it's building up and building up and building up, become a tower. You know, it would become a volcano. It would just, it would be destructive. It wouldn't be good for us. You know, anxiety and stress, not good for us. So we use this and we channel it carefully. We like, uh, like little irrigation channels uh, into the crop, into the work, into the physical expression, into the behavior. Okay. Um, and so I feel like this is really very potent combination. You've got all of these ideas. You've got all of this just this bursting with creative energy, bursting with ambition, bursting with enthusiasm. And we're channeling that into patient, careful, meticulous, routine even work. Okay. I feel like some I feel like you're you're someone who can be prone to anxiety. Um, with the Eight of Wands, it sometimes is like that. If you don't have something to do, you kind of feel on edge. You feel like you need something to do, right? Um, and so that's that's what the that's what the Eight of Wands down here is is letting me know um, that we have to channel this into something else. So this is kind of a confirmation of what we saw at the very beginning. Um, I think this is also what we have to try to temper about ourselves because we, we do as human beings, all of us, not just Aries, all of us, we want results fast. I want this to be just quick. I want to just, I want to put in the effort and then boom, here's my peach tree. Um, so we have to, we have to be aware of that. We have to kind of temper that excitement, right? Which isn't about like, don't lose the enthusiasm. Don't lose that fire energy. Just learn how to how to control it and channel it into the right the right things. So this could also be um, don't just put all of your energy into learning to play guitar, right? Because then it's like this slow and repetitive kind of practicing is going to drive you crazy, right? So maybe this means that you have your main task, your main project, your main goal, your main dream, this big you know hope and aspiration, this big wish. You have the main, the main goal, but then you channel that energy into other things too. Maybe you, you know, you focus on your exercise, your dieting, um, you know, the nutrition, right? Diet and exercise kind of thing. Um, no, I'm not gonna. I was gonna say I don't believe in diets. Maybe I shouldn't say it. Um, I don't want to get in trouble. Um, I believe that you know, I, I don't believe humans are on or off a diet. I feel like if you eat, that's your diet. Your diet is whatever you're consuming, right? That's how I look at it. So I feel like directing some of this fire energy would be into your physical activity and your nourishment, right? Focusing on other creative outlets, right? The main thing is playing the guitar, but maybe as uh, just as another way of, of expressing some of your fire energy, you pick up some painting or, you know, you do some other things. Maybe we're gardening out in the yard or something, right? Keeping ourselves busy. If there's an overflow of this energy, it's got to kind of go somewhere. Right, and we don't want to put it all into just this thing because it's going to drive us nuts. Because we have to be slow and steady and repetitive with it. Does that make sense? Um, in the environment, then, well, there's more Aries energy. Look at that. Got to ring the bell for that. It is the Knight of Wands. The Knight of Wands is um, this is uh, this is your 
impulse, really, to be completely carried away with this fire energy. With this, you're inspired by this thing, you're, you feel this passion in your life, and you just want to let it go. You want to just give in to it and let it take you wherever it wants to go. We really are very happy for the horse to just run off with us, right? Just take us wherever it goes. But this card is very, we want to kind of let go of the reins, right? And just let the horse go um, with us on it. But this card is really about the trust that you have in your fiery, impulsive nature, right? So I feel like this is really, this is a lot about trusting yourself. Trusting that your instinct will lead you the right way. This is the difference between kind of the rational mind and the instinctive mind, the animal brain and kind of the human brain, right? And um, it has, there has to be a balance there. But I think that in your case, the human mind or the rational mind can quiet down a bit to allow this natural flow of energy to take over really trusting your gut, trusting your, your instinct. We don't see a lot of swords cards here, do we? So I feel, um, I feel like this, this energy is, um, I mean, in some ways it's kind of a contrast with the Aries because the, or the Emperor, the Emperor feels a lot more poised, a lot more in control. The Knight of Wands doesn't feel like that. Right? It feels like it's kind of just being led by instinct. It's being led by wherever the fire takes you is where you're going. So there's a little bit of contrast here. And it might be a suggestion that, look, we have this very poised and in control Aries energy, but there's, so, there's such a thing as too much control, right? Too much self-control. Um, and so I like that we have a little bit of this duality that says, yeah, we need to be poised. We need to be in control and direct this fiery energy to where it goes, uh, which is, you know, these two, Emperor and Eight of Pentacles, very appropriately placed together. And then we have these two, which is saying, as, as a balance to this, let's have this. Let's have, let's let this creative fire go in a, a few different directions. Let's trust in our gut to lead us where we really need to be. Right? At the same time, we're being very controlled. We're being a little bit out of control, too. Right? So I like this. I, I think this is a very good balance. Uh, maybe this next card will be the balance. No. Ten of Pentacles. Ten of Pentacles in the, the difficulty. The difficult um, position, the obstacle, perhaps. Right? And um, if there is an obstacle, uh, it might just be that we're... It, if, the, if there is a challenge here, and I think this is probably a good problem to have, that all of this success might lead you to complacency or inaction. That all of this fiery energy, all of this Aries energy, this Knight of Wands, um, will kind of come to a screeching halt and stop when you feel like you've reached that that kind of ultimate goal. This is the idea that there is an ultimate goal. And once I get here, I can get off the horse and I can just, you know, not, I don't have anything else to do. So it's a, it's a good problem to have. It's kind of like you get this successful thing, you get all this money and it's like, okay, great. Now I don't have to go earn any more money. Um, or that, you know, you've had this success in your work. Well, now I don't have to work anymore. Great. Um, but I feel like this is a, this is an obstacle. Okay. And what we know about the 10, first of all, is that it's an ideal. And it's an ideal that we'll never fully attain. We can't achieve perfection. Perfection is that state toward which we trend, toward which we want to aspire and we want to keep getting better and better and closer and closer and closer to perfection, right? That's the work. That's life. That's living. Um, this card is also about when you reach that kind of peak experience. Let's say you learn to play guitar and then you have that big show and you're up there on stage and it feels great. It's that peak experience. And then what do you do the next day? You keep practicing and learning, learning new skills, new techniques, maybe different instruments. Do you start writing more songs? Do you want to go and perform again, right? Do you keep performing the same way over and over again? Or are you going to keep getting better and better and better, right? Is there a way to kind of begin again to, to put a self back at square one and say, all right, now I'm just a student again and I have to go back to the daily practice to learn new techniques, to learn new musical theory or new chords or I don't know, get a, I don't know, get an eight string guitar or whatever they make. Um, do we push ourselves past what maybe was the first kind of 
the first major goal that we wanted to achieve. Let's see what the next card is. Uh, maybe this is a matter of this is something very, very specific that you want to achieve and you have this big goal and aspiration, this dream. Once this dream comes true, because look, we got that, we got that earth and water here with the princess of cups and then the ten of pentacles. Um, once we manifest this dream as we've been dreaming it, then what do we do? Hermit mode. Um, <clears throat> then we maybe... Um, we withdraw? Do we, uh, is this, a, is this a, a card, an energy that's saying we kind of quit and give it up? Once you achieve what you set out to achieve, do you just put the guitar down and go a different way? Right? I mean, it could be. Or is this really saying that you're kind of renouncing this goal and saying, you know what? This isn't my highest goal. I want to go out and do more. Right? I want to push past this. And we think of the hermit as kind of leaving all this money here, leaving that gold behind and continuing on the quest, continuing on the journey, right? With that inner light. So I feel like this is really a spiritual, a spiritual path for you, a spiritual quest. Um, I don't think it's necessarily about you leaving the money behind, but I feel like it's, it's talking about you not being complacent here. In some ways you're renouncing it you're going to take it with you, but you're renouncing it, right? And we're saying, that's not my goal. I'm happy to have it. I will take it, but I'm going to continue on my quest, you know, uh, so that we're not getting glamorized by this success to the point where we just feel like I've made it. Here I am at the big time. I don't have to study anymore. I don't have to um, practice anymore. I don't have to work. I don't have to do anything. I'm just going to enjoy my Ten of Pentacles, and that's it. And it, that would be perfectly great. Right? That would be wonderful. So I think you're going to do all that, but you're also pushing onward. You're also pushing forward and you're continuing this spiritual quest. I think that's really good. Um, it's kind of the idea of like continued education. It's like the greatest musicians in the world, right? Whoever they are, their greatest success, they probably still practice and they still think and innovate. They still try new things. They still experiment. They're still trying to push past their previous success. You know, we see a lot of these artists, I'm not going to name names, all right? You could probably figure some of them out. But they reach a level of success and they just bask in it. They just think, ah, I've made it. I'm the bee's knees and I don't have to do anything else. I don't have to improve. I don't have to mature. I don't have to grow as a person or as an artist, right? I'm just going to enjoy my fame and fortune and uh, that's it. There's no continued, like, development, right? But not with you. And I want to look at that mystery card now. Thank you, Kelly, our very own Kelly Kapoor. Um, maybe she should be lying down. I don't know. That way you can see her better. Um, for this card now, um, what am I feeling for this? Not, not the Emperor energy again. Um, Maybe, maybe the Wheel of Fortune. I'm kind of feeling a Wheel of Fortune here. Um, but I, I kind of like the juxtaposition between the controlled fire energy and the just kind of wild, go wherever it takes you fire energy. So maybe they're going to, maybe this will be um, the Art or Temperance card. Maybe it will be the Justice card. Maybe it'll be the High Priestess. Right? Showing the kind of waxing and waning, the kind of, you know, between the pillar, between the extremes, right? That would make sense. If we go between the extremes of, of poise and prudence and caution and control and absolute out of control, you know, uh, if we go right in between these extremes, then maybe that's going to take us to, you know, the promised land. That's really going to be where it's at. So I'm expecting the high priestess here. Let's see what we have. Oh, yes, look at that. Right between the pillars. And you can see that between the pillars on the other side, behind the high priestess herself, you see the pomegranates. And that, to me, suggests the empress card, right? Because her dress has that kind of same color scheme and stuff. So between the extremes, going in the central path, following your intuition and going not in either extreme, 
of the fire energies that we see, not in either extreme, but partaking of both through the pillars, following our intuition and the divine guidance, that is how we get to that promised land, that land of milk and honey, that utopia, that euphoria, that empress life. This is really, really good. And this is also the card of, of messages, right? I feel like this is a direct communication from the divine directly to you. I think this was meant to find you. This is unbelievable. We're going to do an extended reading too. If you want to stick around, there's a link up top. There's one down below. New readings for Aries every Monday and Friday, 6 a.m. Chicago time. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do. It is totally free. It does not cost anything. And um, leave a comment. Let me know where in the world you're watching from, especially if this is your first time here. I want to thank you. I want to welcome you. I want you to know that you're the most important part of Dove and Serpent Tarot. I thank you and I love you. And we're all in this together.